Maybe it's not earth shattering that I'm recording a bit more. But I was having difficulty right at the end here. And when I reached through here, well, let me back up so we're all out of the car. Things are kind of settling into place and falling on their own as I work. Little things are clicking and clacking. Because uh, your, your control arms are always pushing, so is your suspension on this project. But if you can see the bolt in the center there, I said I'd lost the nut to the other side. No, that's actually fashioned as part of the car. It's a bracket that's, that's on the transmission. So I didn't lose anything. But I had a really hard time getting that started. Well, really hard time, not really. We're like spending uh, 10 minutes answering texts and five minutes working. But what I had to do is I raised the car a bit. I also had to take a little, my stand down that was underneath the engine. My stand was underneath the engine and I had to reduce its height. I also, without a board because it's not an oil pan, uh, raised the engine a little bit because the mount was actually too high. And finally, that kicked over Stan, or Jack, um, you know, emergency Jack. Um, I kicked it down and it gave me the last little bit to start the bolt through, but it's not threading on the other side yet. So these are just some of the strategies. Engine can go up and down to slide things into place. Um, the big hard thing that you won't have to do if you're only after the motor mounts is this control arm. That I didn't even know before I started, but it never had to come off. It's just as convenient that I needed to, thankfully, uh, for the sake of crap. No. I could have just left it on, period. Because you don't even have to take that off to change end links. Okay, well, a little education on me, but you don't have to do that. That can stay on. If you look carefully, this bracket has a piece up front and behind where it hooks. And the one in the back is the one that holds the additional stabilizer bar. You see this guy and then additional stabilizer bar that goes on with the 17 on this side and 14 on the other, if I recall correctly. And remember those tabs I told you about uh, in the last video? That's what's difficult. This is what you have to settle into place and get everything together. Um, it's kind of a pressurized fit, but if you start everything from the right end, tab side first, then it's quite doable. See how it's blown out? They tend to be st at a state of rest. Um, so when you take these off, this one's fighting me. I hope I don't have to cut it off. Change these without touching the stabilizer bar or your sway bar. Stabilizer bar, sway bar. If you don't touch that, if you leave it alone, those are easy. Otherwise, these are hard to do. One. Two, three, four. Welcome to the D.E. Nichols channel. Autobobotter.com. Okay, this is where deeper tools will bite you. On this front motor mount, I can get you in there. There you are. The bolt on the right, the big one, you need a deep 16 to do that and I don't have one. So Harbor Freight always skip 16 on the deep, but they don't on the shallow. But you know, I'm, I was looking through all my sets and I don't got a deep 16 on, on any of them. So occasionally you'll get burned. I mean, that's a number you almost never need. I mean, I, I tried using the wrong size and hoping it would just catch, but I, it just wasn't happening. So what I finally came up with is I got a crescent wrench to hold on that 16 while on the other side I ran the 17 until it was nice and tight. Put a jack stand under it. Guess what wasn't muscle bound to reinstall? <laughs> it was so easy. Whoop! 
well not a jack stand, but an emergency jack. Kind of just lifted it up into place with your tab in, put this in, put this in. I'm still wondering why that, that little nut's supposed to be helpful to me. I try to hit that first just because I thought it might be easier to thread than these ones that go in like, you know, crazy deep. But no, just lift up on it. Now don't get me wrong, the other side is going to still be more difficult because once you sort of half get that started, then you can use the jack stand to make it real easy. But still, you got these control arms and you can kind of hang them up. Now it's going to become a muscle situation and maybe I'll use a lever. Uh, but these hang up on here to get yourself started. And that's going to be a little muscle to get that in. You know, I better, I know how hard that's going to be. I probably ought to put that on before I finish the other side. Since that's still hanging loose like you can see. Well, I'm not sure how I'll end up with it in the end, but all I know is this is getting easier. And here's a tip for you. These can fool you, so don't be driving around thinking, oh, I've got it all done right, and discover something's loose underneath. That's one thing if it's your sway bar. It's another if it's your subframe that's holding your engine up that is keeping your wheels on the road through the control arm and the sub. I mean, okay, you got to do things smart. So let me show you. This isn't quite in. This one's easy to tell, especially since I have almost everything else tightened up. But you can have space like that and not know you have it unless you take some time and go by hand. So here's my top tip for you. When you're done blasting with your power tool and making things faster and easier if you've got it, when you switch to hand, there's always some dirt in there and when it starts to settle in place you can hear it kind of crunch and after the crunch when you tighten up you actually know you're tight for real so that's my top tip I've been using that dirt crunch method all the way through and uh, when I did that the second time after I found my sway bar was loose when I got it out of the way to do that terrible welding. Um, by the way, I really wish I could weld that while this is apart because this sway bar is going to be in the way again. But, oh well, I still got to fix that. Um, here's your dill. If you at least pull the support bar off, that gives you most of your access. So maybe I don't have to go all the way like that. The air compressor is stopped. Here's another one where you can hear the dirt as it's about to settle in. Okay. And once again, the short ones go where it's nice and short and easy to get to. I'm really glad I didn't do a tutorial on all the way through and just the top tips that make it go smoother because I tell you I'll link to the tutorial because it saved me because I needed a step by step a little bit here and there but uh, it's just too boring I mean it's functional you can hit play and stop and play your way through but I just couldn't stay awake through it alright so these zerts, you got to put them in, but put them in real gentle. They strip pretty easy. Well, at least this that kind of style of uh, item that would be a bleeder on a brake, I know those strip easy. So put those in real gentle, and get your grease gun, grease them up, pretty easy. I can't remember where my grease gun is, so this is gonna. <laughs> this might be driven on a little bit without grease put in but they came gr a little greasy from the factory so I'm not too worried if that happens for just a short while all right you know I love you guys and gal maybe I shouldn't say gal all right subscribers I've got 
the truth. I suspected this for a while, but but uh, when I drive it, I'll know. I'm thinking that horrible exhaust sound I have isn't that shield up front. It's sort of settled and rusted together a little bit and gotten quieter. So these two pieces being too close together, I think, is the problem. Something I did off camera while I was waiting for that motor mount is uh, worked real hard on changing my exhaust mounts up. What I mean is, is these rubber guys, um, over the weekend, about a month ago, I put a jack under here real hard and pushed this up as hard as I could because this was hanging low and off to the side and with that doing that I was able to just get this exhaust hanger on. What I had before is with all the the bangs it's had over the years I've had to do a lot of custom work to get things to hang right. So I used to have two side by side slightly offset so instead of having them side by side I had them hooked together with worm clamps like this instead of like this giving it a little bit more length because it couldn't reach but uh, now I had to tighten it up over here and I'd love to have it looser over here I mean look the way it's craned over so that uh, speed bump I hit my theory is it kicked my exhaust way the heck over here making it so it could have that noise and broke my motor mount. Now my motor mount was already ready to go but with this pushing on the engine so hard I think that all of my, as ugly as they may be uh, they almost don't link just little tiny pinholes but they all survive, they're incredibly strong so I need to figure out how to get that that direction. I mean I can pry on it with the pry bar and kind of move it over a little bit but it goes right back. So that's my one question out to you guys. Uh, how am I going to get that moved over? Otherwise the car is functional again. It just might be a horrible noise with exhaust coming through. I mean I could trim the shield or something like that but I like the shield the way it is. You know Caliber converters get hot, and I'd like to leave that way it is. Looking at me the other day, and she's like, "There's a bunch more gray over there." See, you get smarter when you get gray, so it's a good thing. Okay, moment of truth. Is it fixed? Well, other than that wicked, wicked slap of the catalytic converter against what's next to it, that seems fixed to me. I mean, it's just got a little motion that's kind of natural. Uh, that's just kind of how it goes. Looking down here at this motor mount, everything's beautiful. I mean, I checked everything twice. That's nicely in place. If you noticed, I don't hear the rattle anymore that's from over here. The engine struggled a bit. Um, maybe it's doing a relearn. Hasn't turned on in a month or so. Well, I think I did turn it on before I started disassembling. But other than that. But that, that sound, that catalytic converter right there, that's nasty. That slap as you go forward and back. It gives the car a real deep note because the exhaust is vibrating through the whole car. That's not exactly desirable. 
and I do have that link just to finish up, but technically I have a car that's running again, so that's nice. I think we're going to call that done for now, yeah? Now remember, get out there and work on something. Look. Remember anyone else's taglines? What do you think I'm staying? <laughs> Since that won't budge because it's somewhat stripped for the uh, Allen. I've got a torque wrench on it really, really hard. Yeah, I had to get it on there really hard. But once you're not worried about destroying it, that's the way to get it off. And for the record, the Mavitex easily went on by torque gun. And I double checked it since it had a nut on the back and so the silly Allen thing up front. But it's good. Car's almost done. Except for that nasty uh, exhaust situation where it's touching. It's loud and it's annoying. But I'll tell you what, I did think of that one thing. I used a jack sander to the body very softly because I know I'd punch through the floor. <laughs> Ask me how I do that. Um, but as far as that goes, it's just to hold that prior bar in place to see if we can slowly bend the metal. Um, if it needs a lot of treatment like that, it's going to be too late because i got to drive tonight. Oh well. Well, well, well. Whenever I say something's easy. Of course the other side was easy. It loaded the system. Now this side, I can't for the life of me to get it put together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release that bracket. Holding on the scene for a moment so I can uh, put text comments and point at the bracket bolts. I'm going to loosen that up to give me the ability to get that on. And then I will retighten that, putting the load back on the system. Sorry we're running out of energy to show it. But the old one was skinny. The new one is fat. Upgrade yes. Proper fit no. This is actually supposed to be installed this way. But the zerts are barely not touching the CV axle that does have to move a little bit as you turn. So I was certain it was going to hit. I tried to turn the steering wheel but for whatever reason it's locked. I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to install it this way and call it done. And thank goodness I have a ratcheting combination wrench. I thought about it a little bit with all the time I've spent out here. I actually had found my grease gun. So they look good this way. No clearance issues with the CV axle. I think they'll still behave the same way. I don't know. We'll see. I think that if it was on the other way, it would be tighter. Because it would force those two pieces to be farther apart. So this is a downgrade, but I gotta drive it now.